Fisting, testing, one, two, three. All right. Good morning. Good morning. It's another Monday morning. We are here anxious and waiting and ready for the markets to open. For me, it's 7.30 a.m., almost 7.30, not quite. Bell rings in about three minutes here, five minutes here, it says. Yeah, five minutes. We got five minutes till the opening bell. Uh, my name is Lan Turner. I am, just for those of you who don't know who I am, we get a lot of new people stopping by every now and again. I'm a former instructor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the Board of, Ed, Board of Trades Education Centers, currently an instructor of finance at Utah Tech University. And so this is where we come in and we study and we learn about how to trade the financial markets. And what we're looking at right now is we're looking at the futures market. And these are the indexes in the futures market. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the S&P 500. In the upper right-hand corner, we have the mini Dow. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have the NASDAQ 100. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have the Russell 2000. Now, today on the agenda, what we're going to do is we're going to watch the opening bell. We're going to watch and see if there's not an opportunity for us to take a trade or two day trading. And then we are going to move over into the stock market and we're going to look at options. All right. So options in the stock market is what we're going to be doing today. We've got a portfolio that we've put a whole bunch of options on last week. I'm teaching an options class at the university. And so all of our options students are here. And then we're ready, anxious, and excited to learn about trading options. And so we're glad to have those guys here. But because this is YouTube, we are worldwide projecting. So anybody who wants to can come and join. You're all welcome. Love to have anybody come and join who would like to come and learn a little bit about how to trade the financial markets. All right. There's a lot of things that we do here. This is a, a lot of a lot of focus on different areas of finance. And so come and stick with us. Subscribe and be a part of the community and come back on a regular basis and learn a little bit more about how you can better your life through the financial markets. And I think that's what it's all about, right? We're all just trying to live a little bit better life and be prepared for our retirements. And this is how we do that. So that's the focus or the energy that we put forward in that area arena anyway. So it's something you're going to do for the rest of your life. And so you might as well learn and get some ideas on how to do that better for yourself. And that's the whole idea. We're just here to, to see if we can't figure this stuff out together, learn, and maybe I'm one or two lessons ahead of you in the Sunday school manual. And then I can show you what I've learned. All right. I've been doing this for about 25, 30. I guess it's been more than that. I keep saying 20 years, but that was 10 years ago is I've been doing this about 30 years. And so, uh, like I said, maybe I'm one or two, one or two chapters ahead of you in the Sunday school lesson. And so I can kind of help you along the way. And that's what I'm here for. All right. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger. And what we are looking at here again, the S and P, these are the daily charts. And so if we pull up the S and P 500, you can see that we've been going just like a banshee. And this has been that AI run that we've talked about in the times past. And again, we're looking at the futures market because there's no pattern day trading rules over here. And if you want to day trade, you can come over here and day trade and not be affected by those pattern day trading rules. Plus, we have a little bit of extra leverage over here. So it takes a small investment to make a large amount of money. Of course, that cuts both ways. If you have a small investment, you can also lose a large amount of money. So you have to be careful. And so we do a lot of risk management over here and talk about uh, how we protect our positions. And in the morning, we're going to just primarily day trade here in the futures market. That's kind of what we like to do, looking at these index funds. Uh, but we've got a nice big long three drive pattern in here and we've actually hit the fourth drive, which is really rare. It's kind of unicornish, right? Unicornish. We don't generally hit four drives, but this is, uh, going into the fourth drive and this, uh, this uh, AI run, which is causing this is what's making everybody excited. And we want to kind of participate in that, but we also don't want to start taking such big risks that we have the possibility of losing all our money. So we kind of do a little day trading over here in the futures market. We'll go over to the stock market uh, in a little bit, in about 20, 30 minutes, and we'll look at our options portfolio. And that's a lot of fun because, again, we're teaching the options class at the university. And what I like to do is I like to use the futures market and do day trading to make a little bit of money, right? Kind of use this as an income source to then take those profits and go over to the stock market and invest them for a longer term time frame. maybe buy some options or buy some shares. So that's what I do. You can do what you want, but that's just kind of what I do. And that's how I like to do it. And so that's what I kind of focus on. And that's kind of what I teach over here. 
So we're going to do a little day trading, see if we can't pick up some cash. Now, of course, everything that we do here is in a demo account because this is an educational class. This is for school and this is a schoolroom class. So we do a lot of things in here. We try things, we test things, we put stuff off, we take it on. We do all kinds of things just for a learning environment, right? We're, we're not trying to dazzle you with all kinds of, I made $10 million in six minutes. That's not us. If you're looking for that guy, he's over on the other channel. All right. We're here about learning how to do serious trading for long-term, uh, lasting a long time. We don't want to take huge risks like that where, you know, you can make $6 million in six minutes and that's great and wonderful, but you can also lose $6 million in six minutes if that's the kind of trading you're doing. So you got to be very careful. <clears throat> We're not wild and crazy people here. If you're not a wild and crazy person, come and join us. If you're wild and crazy and you're just really out for gambling, there's another channel you can go and subscribe to. All right, let's come down here to a smaller time frame. We're going to come down to the one minute time frame and we're going to watch these markets. Oh man, my lecture went past the opening bell. The market's ringing and here we are lecturing about um, Risk and money management, and we're missing our opportunity to watch the markets take off. All right, so what happens first thing in the morning? Besides the fact that Land's losing his voice already, got to drink a little warm tea. <clears throat> all right, so what happens first thing in the morning? Why do the markets go crazy like this? Why do they shoot all over the place? Well, usually it's because a lot of people trade on these little iPhones. You see these little things? How many of you have these things? I don't know. One or two of us have them. But what happens is in the middle of the weekend, this is a Monday, right? So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know, people are thinking, hey, I want to buy some Microsoft stock or I want to buy some of that NVIDIA stuff. And so they go in and they buy it. Well, they can't execute their orders on Sunday because the markets are closed. So all those orders over the mid, over the, over the weekend or over the nighttime session, you know, in the middle of the night, they stack up in a big queue. And then first thing in the morning when the opening bell goes, bam, 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 those big firms go and they try and match everybody up and they give everybody their orders. And that causes the market to kind of shoot all over the place. So it's not really a trend that you might want to try and trade. It's kind of a little bit of a dangerous spot. So we kind of wait and see what happens after that. Sometimes the market does just take right off and trend right out of those opening bells. And you look back at it and you go, ah, damn, that was tough. I wish I'd have grabbed onto that. You know, but um, the problem is these opening bells are sometimes they're very ski wampus. They jump all over the place. And that's the reason why, because they're not really <clears throat> so much as traders jumping in trying to catch a trend as it is just all those firms that are have all their orders are trying to match them up and give everybody the positions they asked for over the weekend. And so uh, Russell down here, on the other hand, it looks like it's doing pretty good down there. Look at that, Russell. Let's pull that up and focus on the Russell for just a second here. And I'll show you this Russell. This is the Russell 2000. So it's the small cap stocks. There's 2000 small cap stocks in the Russell 2000. This is an ETF called an exchange traded fund, right? And if we were to draw a dollar calculator just from the morning bell where this thing broke out to where it's trading right now, that's a $440 move. So that's a big move on that market. 440 bucks. You're like, well, land, how much did I have to invest to make that $440? Well, if you come over here to the key in the software and look, it'll tell you the investment to make that was $1,000. And so that's pretty crazy. Only a thousand dollar investment. You put a thousand bucks in there and that would have gone up $440 in that short period of time in the last, what, one, two, three, four, five, six minutes. And that's why we like to day trade over here. It doesn't take a big investment to make a large amount of money very quickly. Again, that's because of the leverage that we have. We're all working on margin accounts, but that's why we want to use stop orders and risk and money management strategies and be very careful and you know, if the market just doesn't immediately go in your favor, once you get in over here in the futures market, you don't want to sit on it. You want to just get right back out. So you want to be very good at your timing and the positions that you put on. And you want to make sure that you've got your strategies under your belt. And that's what trading and day trading is all about. It's trying to figure out what are the best setups? What are the best moves? What are the best times of the day to trade? What is it that I want to do and not get crazy and jump in and out of the market too many times? Um, so the idea is to kind of sit on your hands. You don't have to catch, <clears throat> you know, you don't have to sit there and trade a million times. You just have to catch one good trade. Like I said, a thousand dollar investment on that one opening bell right there on that Russell would have been up almost 500 bucks already. Now that's a lot. So you have to be mindful of the fact that this market is really cranking and moving down here. So you have to be careful. 
Um, this is a 15 minute chart over here on the S and P 500. The reason I put a 15 minute chart on that one was because we like to trade options on the S and P 500. And so I kind of like to watch that one for an options opportunity. And I like to trade options on a 15 minute chart rather than down on a one minute chart. Not that you can't, you certainly can, if you want, that's what you want to do. But for me, I like to watch a little bit longer term time frame. Plus I like to watch all four markets at the same time because they all kind of like to do the same thing. They all kind of like to do a little porpoising usually sometimes. Sometimes they go opposite directions, and that's kind of scary. You don't know why they're doing that. So we kind of like to wait and see which one's going to lead. Sometimes there's a leader, and it'll take off, and then the others will trail up and follow. And that's a nice way to trade, too, because if you got one that takes off like a banshee and the others are slow to go, you want to trade the slow-to-go ones because they'll kind of follow the leader. And so that kind of gives you a little bit of a heads up. That's why I like to watch four markets at the same time. Now, one of the problems here is that I can only watch four charts at the same time because I'm here on YouTube and I can only project one monitor at a time. But you know, we day traders, we like to have multiple monitors around and we can see multiple charts and multiple screens. So when we're doing this little YouTube thing, we're kind of got our hand tied behind our back here because we can't see everything that we really want to see. I got another monitor over here that's dedicated just to you guys and YouTube. So that takes up one of my monitors. And then I got this one here. This takes up one of my monitors. And this one down here is another monitor I could use to watch different markets. But right now what we're doing is just kind of focusing on these four. Because something I like to do is if I'm going to trade that Russell down there, I like to come down here to the Russell and you can see I've got all these different portfolios set up. And in the software I use, you can just kind of set this up <clears throat> one time and then all you have to do is just click on it and see which one you want. So if I want to see the mini Russell uh, all by itself, I just click that one right there. Now that brings up four different views of the same mini Russell. Okay, so this is Russell. Man, look at him go. He's uh, on fire. That mini Russell's going to the moon. Gee, many Christmas. What in the heck? A little mini wrestle. So I got 15 minute chart on the mini wrestle in the upper left hand corner. I got the range bar six chart over here on the mini wrestle in the upper right hand corner. Down here in the bottom left hand corner, I've got the one minute chart on the mini wrestle. That's the one we were watching before. And then over here, we got a five minute chart on the mini wrestle. So you can see that these are all the same market, all the mini wrestle but we got different views. Range bar six is a very small view. It's kind of a macro view of what's going on. It's your smallest area. It's where I like to execute my trades. So I like to come in and get in on the Russell. But once we get our market move to break even, I like to look out to longer term time frames, see if we can't catch a longer trend. So that's what I like to do. Uh, again, you can do whatever you like to do. I'm just telling you what I like to do, All right? And so I'm gonna teach you the best I can of the things I like to do. And I've been doing this for quite a while, so I got a little bit of, like I said, I'm probably one or two chapters in the Sunday School Manual ahead of you, and I can help you along the way. And so I look for little ABC patterns. I like to see, man, this market's just going to the moon. You're like, I'm missing out, Lan, I'm missing out. Well, I'm looking at something here called the Heiken Ashy Bars. And Heiken Ashy Bars, are, they're kind of a smoothing component to the trend. And so what they do is they kind of show you these little flat bottom bars. And so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for what we call an ABCD pattern. Market rallies up, pulls back, gives me a little bit of a pullback and then turns and starts to rally once again. And so that's what I like. I like to see those little ABC patterns. But because I got hike and ash on sometimes, it hides those little ABC patterns. So we can come in here, like for example, we can turn off that hike and ashy and you can see the little red bars in here, but we're not getting any pullbacks. There's kind of a little red bar pullback right there. Oftentimes what we do is we look for that market to rally up like this and then turn around, make a little red pullback, and then the next rally up. If you don't get that little red pullback, sometimes it's like, man, alive, I'm not getting an opportunity to get into this market. I just want to get in and give me an opportunity. Come on, market, give me a little bit of a pullback so I can get in. I want to kind of buy the dips, right? Buy the valleys and sell the rallies. And so this is the rally right now. Now what we're looking for is we just want to see if this market's not going to give us a little dip. It might do a little thing like this and then take off again. We'll watch for that. Or it might just come up and it might just flush right back down. It happens all the time. Markets can do lots of different things and there's lots of different patterns that you can play off of. Different ways that you can look at this market and decide what you want to do. I kind of like those high and ashy bars. They kind of look really nice to me. So they help me out. They're a little smoothing component again and they kind of give you an idea of where this market's going. So we're going to watch and see if there's not an opportunity for us to place an order. Look at this range bar six bar up here. Now this is, again, this is a kind of a macro view of the market. It's a very small view as compared to this one minute view down here, which almost makes it look like the one minute view is a long-term chart, but one minute's still very small 
But that range bar six, you can see we break each one of those price bars up into a lot of smaller price bars, which gives us a little bit more macro view and we can kind of play off of that. Now, if this is what we think this market's gonna do, making an ABC pattern, you come into what we call a decision point, all right? See that where it comes down like this? And so you have an ABC and then you get this decision point. Now, the problem is the decision point means the market can go one or two ways. It can also continue the downtrend because it started a nice long red downtrend, a few green bars, it might continue to cascade down at this point. So you can take a short position, but if you're wrong, you wanna get right back out because hey, this thing could just go up, pull back and be on the way back up again too, right? So this is called a decision point, all right? That's a decision point. You have to decide whether you think the market's gonna flush and continue to fall or if it's gonna turn and rally once again. You don't ever know, nobody knows, but what you do is you just come in here and you say, well, I think I'll take a position and find out. And so you put that in there and then you drop your stop back in here. And you, this is a stop order that says, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm just gonna get right back out. I don't wanna take a bigger risk, but if I'm wrong, I'm gonna get back out. If I'm right, I'll stay in as long as I can. I want to stay in until the market looks like it's going to turn around and go against me. So that's it. That's all you do. You wait for a decision point. You make your decision on which direction you want to go. And if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You get back out. If you're right, you stay in. You make money. So cut your loser short. Let your winners run and watch for decision points. That's the whole name of the game. That's how we simplify trading. We're up $45 right now on a $1,000 investment. We just need that market to keep to move higher. See, we're looking at this little one minute chart down here and we got A, B, C, and we're just anticipating that maybe this thing's got a little legs under it and it wants to rally and it's going to push higher. So that's why we got in on this little break right here. You can see this little yellow arrow. That's the ATR, average true range. The average true range is just an indication that the market has turned from bullish or bearish. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a profit. Uh, and that buy entry signal or a sell entry signal is just telling you that the market has changed from bullish to bearish. Now, this market just didn't go very far, did it? It went up there and turned right around and came right back down. And so our trailing stop, again, if it's wrong, we just want to get right back out. So it got out with a minor $10 profit because it didn't continue to rally like we thought it was going to. Look at that 15-minute chart, though. That's one big long bar, but that's that whole trend all through this entire last 15 minutes. But up here on a smaller time frame, you can see that the market's kind of wobbling back and forth a little bit. Let's try to go again. We could try and get in one more time on the next run and see if it wants to go one more time. Or you can say, well, I don't know. It feels like it's getting kind of toppy up in here. I might wait for it to come up, maybe test some of these highs up in here. I draw myself a little box up in here. Draw myself a little box. It's starting to sound like the Irish. Here we go. Draw ourselves a little box. Little resistance zone up there. If it comes up in there, oftentimes that's a strong area of resistance. People like to take a short position off of that. So you can come in and do that, or you can say, hey, I think it's going to go up some more, but you're waiting for a decision point. Now, this is another little pattern that we've got in here. This is called a little wedge or triangle pattern where it comes up here. It fails to go up, comes down, and then it tries a second time, right? So on the try of the second time, you can take a long position on a break above the high of this green bar. That's generally what traders will do. But also, traders are looking at this as a strong area of resistance up in here, all right? And so they might say, well, it pulls up in there. I'm going to take a short position. So let's try taking a, we got in a little late on that one. I was talking too much and got in a little late, but we'll take a short position out of that. They call it a, a resistance zone up there. All right. Where all the markets tried to go up there two, three times and couldn't pass it. And so now it's starting to break down. We got up there pretty high. Now we're anticipating this market's going to flush back down, give a little bit back of all the money that it made for the long guys. Now the short guys are going to come in here and take it out and go down the long side. So well, you can see we're up right now, just from where we got in on that late entry, we should have got in just a little bit earlier up there. But uh, nonetheless, this market's falling in our favor and we're up $100 already, how about that? If we make a couple hundred bucks, we can take that money over and we can put it into the stock market invested in an option or two. And that's what I like to do. I know I said that's what I like to do, but that is what I like to do. All right, well, let's come in here and we're starting to talk like Vice President of the United States now. <laughs> she has a tendency to repeat herself too. Now you know why she's just excited. She's excited about what she's talking about. And she just wants to make sure she gets it all out. All right, here we come. We are dropping down here. Now see this little order that I just dropped in here. That's called a trailing stop order. And you notice that it says that it's buy one stop trail day on the ATR. And that ATR again, it's just those little green dots right there. And I trailed down until we started to rally once again, broke those little green dots. So we got out. 
it got us out. Well, look, it's dropping again if it wants to rally. But if it, this is our little ABC pattern to the downside, right? Sometimes we get a nice little drop, a little rally, and then it'll continue to fall and drop again. Or again, this is a decision point. You have to decide which direction you think it's going to come out of that decision point right there. Land, why is that a decision point? Well, it's because the market's already making two patterns. One is on the way down, so we're anticipating a continuation of the downtrend. Or it could be a reversal and start to go back up again. So that's why it's a decision point. And those are points in which you have to make a decision on which direction you think the market's going to go and whether you're going to take a trade off of it. So we're going to think it's going to fall one more time after it's made that nice little rebound up in there. Okay, so we're going to think it's going to fall one more time. If it doesn't, we'll just get right back out again. We're going to put our little stop order in there. And we're going to say, if you go back up, we're just going to get right back out with a tiny little loss. But if you want to drop, we'll follow you down and make some money again. Be careful because it's coming back against us. Come on, drop. Then one thing we don't like about markets is when they're indecisive and they start to go sideways. That's the worst thing you can get into is caught in a sideways market. And you're trying to figure that they're decision points and you're going to try to go long. And then you try to go short and then you try to go long and you try to go short. That's when you give all your money back. So if you get caught in that, don't do that. That's a bad scenario. Just wait for a good market that's trending, making some good solid decision points, and then you can take your shot at it. But if it starts giving taking money back away from you and these decision points fail, they should not fail. Okay, that was a failure of the downside decision point. Now, you can see it looks like it wants to go back up. So it's a up, it's a down, and it's up again. But it keeps failing on us. Now it's got another red bar. And see all these little topping tails and bottoming tails? That's telling me that the market's starting to get weak. And so I don't want to sit here and play back and forth against that. So I'm going to stop trading for a minute because I started giving money back. So I want to find a good decision point again that I can get into. And that's not one. That's a kind of a tough little area. Even though it might turn and fall on me right now and go without me, well, that's just the risk I'm willing to take because there's always lots of decision points that come along the way. And I don't have to take every single one of them. Sometimes I want to just sit on my hands and wait and see what's happening because the market's starting to get a little weak over here. We look at these longer-term charts over here, and we can see we're still way up here. It's kind of rallied quite strong. The one-minute chart, you can show that it's starting to get a little weak in here. It didn't make that little ABC like we thought it was at this point. It might come back in here on the one-minute chart, and we see this one here where it's getting a little downtrend. So we may start looking for something like this on the longer-term chart. We may get a rally and another pop back up and go long once again. So we can maybe take this long position here, but it's still I'd like to see it go again. Rather than just kind of taking every little, what I call an A1, a little starter out of every single little break like that, one, two, three, and see them how they all failed. And then they fell to the downside, fell to the downside. We don't know which one of these is going to break out. So right now we're just going to wait for one of them to break out. And then we'll try and take the continuation at that point. But right now we don't need to take every single one of these breakouts. We can just wait for it to move. And what we'll do is we'll make it for it to make four or five bars down. Get a little red bar pull back and then we'll get in. And then that'll be where we get in. That's all. That'll be our new decision point down here. But right now it's just going sideways, being really stupid. So don't sit there and try and jump back and forth and jump in and out when it does that, because that's where you're going to give all your money back and lose all your money. Again, I'm just one or two Sunday school lessons ahead of you, and I've learned that the hard way by trying to do it myself. So don't do that because that's what that, well, that's the painful side of trading. So what you want to do is you want to just kind of wait for that market to start to move once again. And it will. It'll start to go again, and it'll give you a trend, and you'll feel bad. You'll say, damn it, I missed it. I missed that whole big long trend. But, hey, you didn't know it was going to trend at that point. So you can't take every one of these little breakouts because if you're going to cut your loser short, let your winners run and it doesn't run and it just keeps cutting your loser short, cut your loser short, cut your loser short. That's called death by a thousand cuts. Where do you think that term came from? Holy cow, I don't want to have that happen to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that market to start to run first. Once it runs, then it'll give me a little pullback and I can get a new decision point and I can decide whether I want to take it down or long. But right now it's just dying on me. So what do I do when a market dies on me like this? Well, I go and look at other markets. Let's go in and look back at the indexes. There we go. Here's the indexes there down there in that bottom left-hand corner is that Russell we were looking at. Now over here in the or bottom right corner is that NASDAQ. Look at the NASDAQ. Wow, that market's starting to look like it wants to play with us, give us an opportunity. What about the Dow? That Dow's being real choppy. It's got a couple bars in there with flat tops. And again, on these uh, price bars that are the uh, Hike and Ashy bars, those Hike and Ashy bars, we like to see top flat tops and flat bottoms. Those mean good trends, but when we see a lot of bars like this with lots of topping tails and bottoming tails, we don't like that. 
We're not happy about that. So we don't want to trade a market that's got lots of topping tails and lots of bottoming tails. We want to wait until we can get a nice trend with lots of flat tops, lots of flat bottoms here. Look at this old uh, NASDAQ down here. Lots of flat tops, lots of bottoming tails. I mean, flat tops, flat bottoms. That's what we want to see. That's an active market. So let's go and take in. We can come in here and we can drop down here. To the Let's do to the micro NASDAQ. I'm going to do the micro NASDAQ with you. All right. So the micro NASDAQ. Man, what are the, what's the difference between the micro NASDAQ and the mini NASDAQ? Well, the micro NASDAQ is 10 times smaller than the mini NASDAQ. Min, min, the mini NASDAQ is pretty big. $1,000. You can make a lot of money really fast. So this move right here. <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see, is a micro mini NASDAQ 100. That is a $100 investment, not a 1,000, because again, it's 10 times smaller. So here on the micro NASDAQ, that's a $123 move for a $100 investment. Now, if I was in the mini NASDAQ night, the mi micro NASDAQ, that would be a $1,200 move with a $1,200 with a with a one thousand dollar investment, a one thousand two hundred and thirty dollar move with a one thousand dollar investment. That's how big that market would be if we were in the mini, but we're in the micro, so it's ten times smaller. So we got uh, not quite such a big risk. So you have to decide how big your account is, and how much risk you want to take, and decide which market you want to get into. Whether you're going to trade the micro or the mini. And so for me, I like to trade the micro Nasdaq, but I like to trade the mini Russell and the mini Dow and the mini S and P. Now, again, up on the S&P, I like to do the options up there. doesn't mean we can't day trade it. We certainly can. But we like to day trade the mini Dow and the mini Russell and the micro NASDAQ. That's for me. That's just my, my style. Now, you can do whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here telling you what I like to do. And once again, I'm maybe one or two, one or two lessons ahead of you in that Sunday school manual. And so I might have a little bit more to tell you because I've done it once or twice. And this micro... This mini NASDAQ can sometimes, man, I'm telling you, the mini one, the big one, it can rip your wheels off really fast. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so I like to trade this one down here a little bit uh, better when I'm trading the NASDAQ. All right, we're going to come in here and we're going to open up. Oh, my goodness, look, I got a range 50 up there. Don't really want a range 50, but let's pull it up anyway. And we're going to come in here and I'm going to show you a neat little trick. So we've got a one minute. we got a two minute. Let's put in here a, a five minute chart. So we now have our five-minute chart down here, a longer-term chart. Let's change places with them. We're going to take our five-minute chart and just drag the header up there, put the five-minute chart up in the upper left-hand corner, put the two-minute chart down here in the bottom. So now we can see what's going on. This market's just been going sideways. Those white arrows, those are all coming in here on this two-minute chart from the stochastics indicator. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn on MACD because I like MACD. MACD is a good tool. It's telling us call to arms. Look at that call to arms on the MACD. That's telling us we got some upside potential. We're trying to break in here, break those blue lights to the upside here. So we're looking for a bullish opportunity. <clears throat> and we're getting ready to take a bullish opportunity on the one minute chart. But I want to see what's going on down here on these range bars. But that's a range bar 50. And that's a little big for me. I want to try to scoot that thing down just a little bit. So let's open this thing up. I'm going to come down here and right click on the tab. Right click on it, and I don't, I don't want a range bar 50. Let's look at a range bar six. It might be a little bit too tiny. We'll watch that just for a second. Oh my goodness, yeah, range bar six. It's moving a little too fast. So let's change that back over. And we're going to bring that up. Let's bring it up to 25 and see how that looks. There's a range bar 25. Retrieving the data. There it is. That's a little better, I think. Eh, it kind of looks a lot like the one minute. I don't want to duplicate the one minute just in a range bar chart. That's not going to do us any good. So we have to decide whether that's, well, no, it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and make that some candlestick price bars because that's what I like. I like to see them like that. And then we got that ATR down there. It's one of my favorite indicators. I like the ATR. So I'm going to come in here to the ATR preferences. And you can see it's set to 1 and 0.9. That's a little aggressive, but that's okay. We are on the range bar chart. So I'm going to leave it a little bit more aggressive. And I like to trade this. So I'm going to bring this one up in here. We're going to use that as our primary. We'll use this as our secondary. We'll use this as our third and area, and this one as our fourth and area. How's that go? All right, so we're looking for this market to rally a little bit more. It's gone back up to that magic blue line. What is that magic blue line? Well, that magic blue line is the VWAP, volume-weighted average price. And why is that important? 
Well, the only reason it's important is because everybody else thinks it's important. And so the market has a tendency to go back up there once it leaves there. So if it leaves it and comes down, well, it's kind of like a rubber band. It's kind of like a magnet. It likes to pull the market back to that blue line. That becomes a new decision point for us. This market might turn flush once again as it comes up here and tests this little blue line. Now, it hasn't quite touched the blue line, but sometimes it doesn't come all the way back and touch it before it starts to flush once again. Now, you could come in here and say, well, Lan, I want to, uh, that little yellow arrow came in there off of our favorite indicator, the ATR. Why don't we go ahead and take a short position right here? We could certainly do that if you want to. You just have to put your little stop in there in case we're wrong. <clears throat> so let's give it a shot. We're going to, oh, it's coming back. Let's not give it a shot. Let's wait one second, see if it's going to break that yellow dot. Watching the tiny little chart in the upper right-hand corner, trying to see if this thing's going to show a little weakness, and we'll take a short position out of here. Short position means we make money when the market falls. Now, I'm not going to take a big risk. If it doesn't just go in my favor, I'm going to get right back out, and I'm going to drop that in there on that little yellow dot. If it comes back, breaks that little yellow dot, ooh, I'm just getting out. See, that nasty little market didn't drop in my favor, so I just got right back out. Now, because I'm in the micro mini, I didn't lose a whole bunch of money. Uh, nearly about one-tenth of what I would have lost if I was over in the full-size market. So that's good. Now it's breaking that yellow dot, and that means it could go back up and continue our rally higher. Okay, so we got our up, our little bit of a down, and now maybe a back up. We thought maybe there for a second we are going to get an up and then just a flush back down. We tried to take that flush back down, but it didn't go. But now what's happening? We're getting that little sideways dance again like we got before. We don't want to take a bunch of those because we want to wait for that thing to break out of that thing, show some promise, and then give us a little break and a little decision point, all right? Or we want to see it fall. We didn't want to. We tried to take that first one, but as we've learned, that's generally not a good idea. And I call those A1s, which means it's the first starter of a new drive. And so those A1s, you can see how many of them there were in there. There's a lot of them. There's one here. 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 And those A1s, if you keep taking those, you're going to just give all your money back. So don't do that. You know, I took one of them to try and see. We have what we call the three times a charm. So if you get a third one, we'll oftentimes take that third one because that one's got a higher probability of working out for us. But we don't know which one of these is going to fall. One of them's going to fall or one of them's going to take off and you're going to feel bad. That's called FOMO fear of missing out and you're gonna that's what keeps you jumping in and out on all these different things and of course that's also what keeps you losing money makes you lose money is that fear of missing out you got to miss out on that first drive that's just the name of the game when you got a narrow sideways channel you don't know which one of them is going to break out and run so you just got to wait for it to do it first all right so you're going to have a little fomo and that means that it's time to start looking for an opportunity to get in but don't just try and get in on these little narrow breakouts you got to wait for it to break out first let's we'll let it go let it go, and then the little tiny pullback, and then that's when we'll get in. All right. Now, I know sometimes it comes down, it starts to go, it gives a little tiny pullback, and goes like that. And you're like, well, I tried to go short on that decision point because Land said take the continuation and let that first one go. But then I got my hiney handed to me right there. Well, that happens sometimes because not everything is perfect in this world, believe it or not. I know some of you have experienced a few things like that on your own, but nonetheless... That's the way we play the game, all right? We don't want to just keep jumping in and jumping out, and jumping in and jumping out. That's not the way we play this game, all right? We're up 50 bucks. Hey, 50 bucks, that's not a bad little starter. Getting a little bit of green under our belt. Now we just have to wait for a good setup and we can do it again. And nothing seems to be coming along. You know, one of the things that really drives these markets and makes them move is news. We might not have any news, so why don't we go look at that and see what kind of news we got going on. This is my news report. Let's see if I can bring up some news. There we go. That's my news report right there. Let's hit refresh on that. See if we've got, oh, today's Monday. Let's go look at the impact. We're going to look at two impact. We don't want to even bother with the one impacts. 6.30 this morning, we had the Chicago Fed National Activity Index. Eh, we could probably go back and look at 6.30 this morning. Looks like it moved the market a little bit back there. But what we're looking for here is at 8 o'clock. Oh, my goodness, it's coming up right here. Right now, we're going to see new home sales. New home sales. New home sales report coming out at 8 a.m. That should move the market for us. Let's come back and watch. That report's coming out right now. Come on, baby. Let's go back and look at all the charts at the same time because we should be able to see one of these markets taking off and moving on this new home sales. If we got good news on the new home sales, maybe the markets will rally. We get bad news, maybe they won't rally. Problem with the news is we don't know whether the news is going to be good enough to rally the market or not. 
Sometimes it comes out as good news and the market falls. Why would it do that? Well, because it wasn't good enough news. And so we are not here to determine which direction the market's going to go on a news report. We're just going to take whichever direction it wants to go. Because we don't know whether the big boys, the ones who actually move the markets, determine whether they get to determine which direction the market goes, not us. So all we have to do is let them get the news, read it, see what they think. And if they think the market's going to go up, we'll just jump on like a fly on an elephant's ass. All right. We'll go for a ride because that's all we are. We're just little tiny guys. We don't have a lot of play, play, play in these markets, play in these markets. We can't really move them. But that NASDAQ looks like it wants to wants to do something. It's winding up. It's like winding its spring up really tight and it's ready to explode. Doesn't it look like it wants to explode? I just don't know which direction it's going to explode. It looks like it wants to drop. But sometimes it fakes out on these things. It'll drop like that and then turn around and go to the moon. And so I want to be really careful. Again, I don't want to take the first move. I'll wait for the second one. And I don't know. Sometimes you think it's going to come down and it'll get a little one and go again. And it doesn't. It comes down, does a little one like that. And you think it's going to go short. You take your short and it goes long and you get stopped out again. So you have to be careful. But we want to make sure it's moving first. All right. Moving first. But it doesn't want to do anything. We've had that reports out now. They've got it in their hand and they're reading it. They're not too happy about it. They can't decide whether they like that report or not. Let's look at it one more time. It was coming out at 8 o'clock a.m. my time. I'm on UTC 6. You're going to have to make the adjustment for your time. Land, what's that report you've got there? It's called tradingeconomics.com slash calendar. This is where I come to look at my reports. I come in here and I turn off all the countries except for the U.S. because that's the markets I'm trading. And then I come in here and I say UTC6 because that's my time zone. And then I see Monday here at 8 o'clock. we got new home sales coming in here. Now look at that. It says that the forecast was 67. The consensus was 67.5. The previous was 66.4 and the actual was 66.2. So that's actually bad news. Now, is it bad enough news to move the market down? Or is it not bad enough news to move the market down? We don't know. But this is that NASDAQ there on the one-minute chart, and it looks like it wants to drop. It wants. It looks like it's winding up for a drop. Look at that. Look at that, Russell. It's kind of coming in here. It's winding up, too. It's got a little kind of a pattern like that. Now, what happens with that pattern? Generally speaking, we say, well, if it falls out the bottom, we take a short position and ride it down. Or if it breaks out the top, we take a long position and ride it up. The problem with that is oftentimes we get fake breakouts because you know what? We're not the only ones that see these patterns, <laughs> believe it or not. There's other people who know about these and especially big players. And so sometimes they'll fake it one way and go the other, or they'll fake it this way and go the other. So you have to be very careful. That's why I don't like to take the first breakouts on anything because oftentimes they're just false breakouts. Just trying to catch your money. Just take you. We call it shaking out the weak sisters and the shoestring salesmen. All right, so don't be a weak sister or a shoestring salesman. Well, let's wait for this thing to break out of that narrow little channel right there. It's winding up like a spring. I think it wants to go. we got a trend across the top on this one, a trend across the bottom on that one. It's trying to decide what it wants to do. Now, generally speaking, we think of those as continuation formations because we got a nice big long flag pole right there. We go in and create the pennant or the flag, and then we expect it to go out the top. All right, but we didn't get great news. Great news did not come for us on that report, but hey, you know what? We're not the ones that determine the direction of the market after news. We just expect it to move. Now, there it is. It's starting to fall. Now, we can take that first breakout if we wanted to. If we wanted to take it, we could definitely do it. Let's go down here and see if we can go back to the NASDAQ. Micro mini, we're going to go to mini NASDAQ. Where was that mini NASDAQ? Sometimes mini NASDAQ range, mini NASDAQ minutes. Micro, micro NASDAQ. That's where we were. We were looking at the micro NASDAQ. Here it comes. There's that narrow sideways channel we've been watching on that NASDAQ. There's that one minute. It, see that? It's going green right there. That means it wants to go up. Let's give it a shot, all right? Should we, should we take a rally on that one? We'll see if it wants to go up. We're not going to take a big risk. We're going to come in here and put our stop right close. If it doesn't just go straight up, we'll just get back out. Come on, baby. Don't you want to go up? We want you to go up. Come on, rock and roll. Time's a-wasting. There we go. Once you make your decision and you get in and you put your stop in, there's nothing else you can do but sit here and become a cheerleader. So you cheerlead the best you can for your little 
team. All right. We're on team bull right now. We're on the bulls. So go bulls, go, go bulls, go. We want to see the bulls push that bar, that, that market up the field. And this is like playing football. All right. So we are still stuck behind the line of scrimmage. We got the ball right here on the little yellow dot, which isn't past the line of scrimmage, which is that green line. Uh oh, they're pushing us back behind the line of scrimmage. Going to come back, maybe tackle us behind the line of scrimmage. We hate it when that happens. Don't tackle us behind the line of scrimmage. Come on, Bulls, push higher. Push it up there. Push it up there. There you go. Push it up there. Give us a chance to get our ball above the line of scrimmage. We got a news report. You'd think we'd get a little bit better run right here. I think after this trade, we're going to go over and look at the stock market and look at some options, all right? We'll slow things down. Just, oh, what a nasty little booger. We got stopped out behind the line of scrimmage. Well, fortunately, we're here on the NASDAQ uh, micro account, so we didn't risk a whole lot. Now, Land, do you want to take that short position just in case it wants to run? No, we took our one shot at it. We're going to wait and see if it doesn't want to run and make a run first, and then we'll wait for the decision point. Right now, it's still just being stupid. It doesn't want to make a decision for us. So we're going to give up on this market because we're kind of running out of time, and we got to run over and look at our stock options, all right? So we're going to open up our options table right here, options software. And while that's opening up, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say hi to a few people. We'll see who we got in the house. We got Michael Bruce saying hello. It's good to see you, Michael. We've also got uh, Bruce R. Good morning, everyone. We got Kirk Schwartz saying hello. We got John David Lundberg saying hello. We got Lawrence the Killer saying hello. Uh, Lowdown Kirla saying hello. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to have you guys. Look at that. What's that? That's the micro algal one minute chart. Whatever the heck that is. Hey, there's Truly Calm coming in and saying good morning. Anybody else want it? We got a bunch of people watching in class. We ought to have some more people say hello, and I'll make you famous. So class is pretty good size class today. We're happy with the number of people that are watching. So glad you could make it. Hopefully you learned a little bit there on that little day trade lesson that we had. And we're going to come over here and we're going to look at our, uh, that was a pump and dump. It looks like one of our pump and dumps. But we got our portfolio in here that we're going to look at. Again, this is not real money. This is all of our demo because we're learning, right? We're learning in here. That's what this is. This is a learning, learning class. So if you want to learn how to do all this stuff, we put on lots of stuff just to see what they do. And that's how you learn. You come in here and you say, oh, I want to put an option on. I want to learn about options. Well, don't just put on one option and then say, oh, I bought a call on that option on that market there, on that Apple stock there in my demo account. And I'm going to sit here for three months waiting to see what it does. That's no way to learn. The reason we give you $100,000 in your demo account is so you can come in here and put on 100,000 options and learn from a Learn 10 times faster, all right? So that's the name of the game. That's what you want to do. You want to come in here and put on a whole bunch of things. You can just take them right back off again and then put them back on, take them back off to put them back on. You can do whatever you want. All kinds of fun things in a demo account. That's how you learn. So let's come in here, and we're going to go into our YouTube portfolio, all right? So here's our YouTube portfolio. Let's see what we got going. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select all and I'm going to open, right click and say open charts. Make sure we got every single one of them open and it's going to pop around through here, opening all of our YouTube charts, the ones that we have positions on. We're going to go down through them quickly and see how they're doing and see why we put some of these things on. Sometimes we just put them on just to see what they do. It's not necessarily the best timing, but that's because we're in a class and we can't always wait for the best timing or sometimes we might have to wait a couple of weeks just to put something on. And by then class would be over. So we come in and we put things on just to see what they do. Sometimes again, we have to realize that we're not doing it at the best timing. And so that's up to you as a student to be able to do your technical analysis and do your reading of the charts and determine the best time to be putting some of these orders on. This sometimes is just how to put the orders on, not necessarily when. We try to do our best at trying to do them when, but like I said, because this is a learning environment and a classroom environment, sometimes we just put them on just to see what they do. And that's the way you learn. So here we are. This is the win resorts. Why are we starting with win? It's not at the top of the list. Let's start with Apple. Well, there's our Fibonacci cone of probability. That's one of the things we did to try and determine when to put these on. Now, we had some good news come in from Apple. Did you hear that? The news that started to come in that Apple was going to start to enter into the AI marketplace. And they everybody's getting excited to see Apple finally, you know, tip their hat and say that they were going to come out with a new operating system for your iPhone that was going to incorporate some AI stuff. And then guess what happened? 
Apple got sued. They got sued by a whole bunch of states and all kinds of crazy things going on for Apple. So I dumped my stock like a hot potato. And good thing I did because that market's come flying down, coming out of there, losing money again. Are they going to be able to recover from this? I don't know. Maybe not before some uh, other continuation of the downtrend. We got to see what's going to happen with this big nasty lawsuit. So the Apple's just really been struggling lately. They've not been a very good company. They haven't been able to participate in the big rally. You know why? Why? Because they didn't get involved in AI. They skipped that whole AI thing, and then they didn't even develop their own. They started, they tried, and then they decided, well, we're not going to develop our own AI system. We're just going to take one from somebody else and stick it in our software. So at least they have announced that. But um, you know what? One of the problems with Apple and their um they're so big. They have to sell a lot of stuff to keep going and making money. And what they've been doing is they've been buying their shares back and that kind of props them up. They got a lot of cash. And so they've been buying their shares to try and prop their stock up because they haven't been doing very good and been doing very well either. So I haven't been very happy with Apple. Been trying to wait and see if they're not going to turn things around, but man, they've just been struggling. The problem with Apple is they need to sell lots of iPhones to keep up like this. And their iPhones are starting to get to the point where they're end of life. I mean, who wants to buy a new iPhone when all you got to do is spend another thousand bucks. And the only thing they do is change a little camera or something, something you never use anyway. So that's one of the problems they're running into right now. Nobody wants to buy their shit. All right. So unless you break your iPhone, they ain't selling man very many. So they've been struggling, and then they come out with a new operating system, right? A new operating system for the software. But what do they do? They're a great company, so what do they do? They don't charge you for it. They give it away to you for free. <laughs> don't make money with free. So they do have a lot of, you know, licensing agreements with companies and stuff that keeps them a little base of income. But, man, if they're not selling iPhones, they're hurting, and they're not selling iPhones. So unless they can come out with something fantastic and new, they're not, and then they came out with that new headset thing, and they thought that was gonna make them shoot off and go to the moon. Remember, they put a lot of energy into that, and old, you know, old Zuckerberg put a lot of energy into that too. And then he realized that that wasn't people weren't as happy with those little headsets as he thought they were going to be, and so he kind of pivoted and went back into into some other stuff too. And uh, old Zuckerberg got back into the AI world, and his stock went to the moon. Well, Apple, they're always slow to the market, right? And they never want to be first. They just want to be best is what they say. But the problem is they put all this effort and energy into this little headset so that they could be the best. And then they never caught the big exciting run. So they come out late. The excitement had already passed by. And then their little headset was like as much as a Tesla. I mean, <laughs> that damn thing's expensive. So their target market couldn't really afford it. And so now nobody bought it. And so their stock didn't go up for them on that one either. I would love to have one of those little headsets and, Hey, I got some money. I could afford one if I want to, but why would I do that? When I can go over and buy something that's almost exactly the same thing from old Zuckerberg for one third, the price, you know, so they got a little bit of problem going on some of the products that they've been releasing and they're not doing too well. So we got to be careful with Apple. We all love Apple. Don't get me wrong, but Hey, we got to be honest about, you know, when they're in, when they're shooting themselves in the foot, they're shooting themselves in the foot. And that's just all there is to it. So let's come down here to, and that's why we're not, we could go short on them. We could buy a put option. You know what? And we haven't bought a lot of put options. I don't like to short Apple. Why? Because man, Apple's such a great company. You hate to short Apple, not a, but they just got sued. And this little call to arms, look down here on the MACD, the call to arms is going up and it's failing. It's got a red bar right here. These guys may not be able to recover. We might go in another downtrend. This is a drive one down. This is a drive two down. We may see a full, complete drive three down on Apple. We thought maybe they were going to stop at drive two and start to pull it out, but no, then they they got sued. And they didn't enter into the AI system with their own stuff. So they're just going to stick somebody else's stuff on Siri, and maybe Siri will be able to talk to you here in the future. But who knows right now they got to fight this lawsuit. And so we might want to just buy a put option on them. Let's go ahead and do that just to show you how, just in case that's something you might want to do. We come out here. How long do we think that's going to go? Well, when we're going to buy a put option, we got to determine the amount of time. That's the first thing we have to decide. So let's come in here and get rid of all these arrows so we can have a little bit. This is our Fibonacci projection on here. This is our cone of probability. All right. We talked about that in the last class. And if we think this market's going to flush down and stay inside that cone of probability, we have to decide how long it's going to go. Well, we do that with Fibonacci projections. We come down here and we drove from the top of the trend to the bottom of the trend 
this pullback, and that kind of gives us a projection of where we think this market might go. Well, if it drops all the way and does the same distance from A to B, well, that would be from C to D, which would be down here at the 100% level. But we don't always think it's going to go and do a whole 100% on the third drive. So we're going to just say right down here on the 61 or 78.6, you know, and maybe even the 50% level. But this is kind of the Fibonacci sweet spot down here on the, um, on the projection level right there, right? But then we got those numbers down here, which are the Fibonacci projections and the Fibonacci golden ratio is 130.9, way down there. Do we think that Apple's going to really fall to the 130.9? Man, who knows? I think our first target would just be down here to the 61.8. So we could look at that and say, well, it looks like it might be down there somewhere around April 15th. If it follows that same logical projection or that same what we call the volatility run, okay, this volatility swing. So if it makes another volatility swing that matches the first one, we could be down here right around April 22nd, end of April, down here around 61.8, 78.6. Well, how much time is that? If we come in here and draw our ruler across there, that's about 21 days. So we need to decide that we've got an option that's going to be, and I like to double the amount of time. And if we think we got possibility of 100, we might want to double that amount of time. So it's 30 days. So we might want a 60 to 90 day option out here. So let's go price one of those out. We're going to come out here to, there's 88 days. Let's go see what those are running at. $710. How much? Plenty of volume. We want that volume number to be 100 at least. We want the open interest to be over 1,000 and we got plenty. So that's a good one right there. $700 gives us 88 days to have that market flush down here into this Fibonacci sweet spot. We could do that. So we come down here and we say buy. We're going to buy that right there. That put option would put us at the money. If that market continues to break and breaks that new low, we'd stay in it and we'd look for it to run all the way down to 50 to 61.8. And maybe we could take some profits down in that region here. We're going to treat this just like a day trade. If this thing goes and we say, oh, well, we're going to take a short position. And if it goes up and breaks a new high, comes up and breaks those little yellow dots or you know, comes back and starts to lose money, we just get right back out again. We, just because it's an option doesn't mean you need to hang on to it. Now, the max amount of money you can lose is $710, but I don't want to lose $710. That would be at expiration. And expiration is clear out here at this purple line. But that gives us lots of time and opportunity for this market to come down here, decide what it wants to do. If it starts to go a little sideways down here, we can just take our profits off before it turns and starts to rally once again. Because we do have to remember that even though they're being sued and before then they're not selling anything and they're just kind of living off their laurels right now, we do have that, that uh, mathematical model that we like to pay attention to, which is our drive one, drive two, drive three. Markets like to move through those three drive patterns and we're coming into that third drive. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to execute this. We've got our order in there. We're going to go ahead and buy that. Let's go ahead and we'll just mark it into that order. And they should give it to us. Come on, baby, rock and roll. Give us that order. Maybe they're not going to do it with the market order. We might have to do it with the limit order. Come on. We're going to come back in here. And when they want, they're asking 725. Let's come up here to 725. And we'll just offer them the limit order and see if they take it. There we go. We got our put option. We're in there, $725, down $5 because that was the spread that we had to pay. Let's get rid of some of these drawings, delete all the circles, delete all the arrows. Man draws lots of arrows. All right, so that's how we do that one. We're just anticipating the possibility that the market might fall. If it continues to fall, there's some other things we could do to try and pick up a little bit of extra cash along the way. We could come in here and sell a put option, sell a call option above it. But I want to make sure it's dropping first. Let's let's make sure this little baby's in the money and moving a little bit before we start doing some crazy things like that. All right. Let's go look at another market. Let's come down here to ADM. Oh, ADM started to move in our favor. That's a good move right here. I think this one was actually one of those Kramer versus Kramer uh, recommendations. And it crossed right above that what is that? That's our 50 period moving average. And it started to break higher. And I think Kramer looked at that and he looked at the markets and he's like, let's get into some archers, Daniel Midland. And so we bought a call option on that thing and we're up a hundred bucks. Looks like it's getting ready to kind of top out in here. Doesn't it? Looks like it wants to give us a little bit of a pullback right in there as it's coming up. It could give us a little ABC pattern, right? Cause that's what we expect. We don't expect markets just to go straight up. Now nah, that doesn't mean they can't, they do sometimes, but not very often. Usually they give us a little bit of a pullback and then a rally once again. So you have to decide if you want to sit through that. It's starting to make some flat tops in here. It's not making higher highs on the individual price bars. It's starting to slow down a little bit. So we want to watch this one really close. If it breaks down there, we'll stay in it until it breaks that, uh, 
that flat bottom right there. The last bar right there, if it breaks that flat bottom, if it comes down and touches that, we're going to just take our profits because we don't have very much in there. So we don't want to have this thing turn around and fall and come all the way down. Then we'd have to sit through a big drawdown and a rally once again. We'd just take our profits off, let it fall back down. We'll get back in and go with it the next time. We could do that. Or you could say, hey, look, land, why bother? I've got 88 days on this thing. I don't need to be jumping in and out of the market all the time. If I draw back down into negative numbers, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to let it go because it's got lots of time in there. And you could do that too if you want. It's up to you. You're the trader. Which would you do, Lan? You're two Sunday school lessons ahead of me. Well, I told you what I would do. I'd wait for that thing to break right there. And if it took, if it comes back and breaks that line, I'd take it off. Because I don't know if it's going to come back down here and just stay down here and go sideways. I don't want to take the risk of having to get back in. I'll wait for it to make a new decision point. If the decision point looks good to me, I'll get back in at that point. But I don't want to wait for a month for it to turn around and make that switch and come back down. That's just me. You can do it how you want. You do you, I'll do me, all right? That's just what I would do. All right, here we go. This is Albermali, Albermali. Again, Kramer was really excited about this one for some reason. It did make one little Kramer bump in here, but then it just kind of died and it's been going sideways. And that's why we're not in this market. Now, there are some neutral option strategies that we're going to learn in class tonight. Because tonight is our university class and we're going to be at the university learning about neutral option strategies. What do we do when markets go sideways? So we're going to put some of those on, but that's not today's class. That'll be tomorrow's class. We'll come back here and we'll look at Albert Mommy, Albert Murley, Al, Album, Al, Album, Mar, Al, Album Marley. Never heard of them. Album Marley tomorrow and we'll put on some neutral option strategies. How does that sound? All right. But then if let's come down and look here. Uh, we'll Invesco senior loan. Oh, that's a, that's a bond. If you're in bonds, that's a bond. That thing's dropping out of the bottom of that thing. See how sometimes they do that? They just go up and go green, and you think they're going to go forever, and they don't. They turn around, they come right back down to make the little A, B, C pattern to the downside. Let's come in here, and let's just go to the ones we got money on. Let's come down here to DFS Discovery. DFS Discovery. This is a long position. We've been sitting on this one for a while. We're just losing time decay. We're up $70, so that's good. At least the market's outperforming the time decay, but that's because we got a lot of time. We picked up some good time on this one. So we still have expiration is not until 621. January, February, March, April, May, June. That's June 21st. All right. So not a lot we can do here. I guess we could sell some call options against it, try and pick up some premium because it's just not moving up. But I don't know if there's any money in them. Let's go see, shall we? Let's go out 25 days and see if there's any money out here. Now we have to do calls. So we have to go over here to this one. Oh, look, that's not so bad. We could sell this one here. Oh, well, it's kind of close. Where do we think the market's going? We could pick up an extra 100 bucks if we wanted to do that. If we think that market's just going to stay below that red line, it's not moving like a banshee. If it stayed below that line, we could sell them right there and pick up an extra 100 bucks. Of course, if it goes above that line, we give up anything above the red line, right? And that's okay. Sometimes, you know, one in the hand is better than two in the bush. That's a $700 move if it went up there that we'd give up to pick up $100. Do we think it's going to do that? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you think it's going to rally and go hard? If it is, you don't want to put that sell up there. If you don't, if you think it's just going to kind of be sideways here, you can go ahead and sell that baby and pick up an extra 100 bucks. Let's go ahead and do that. We don't know, but hey, $100 is $100. We still get to keep the money between where the green line is and the red line is. Oops, I accidentally cleared that one off. But anywhere between the red line and the green line, we get to keep that money too, and that's $800. So it would be $800 plus an extra $100. And if it stays down, if it just stays down here, we still get to keep the $100. And then that's okay too. Sometimes it's just not worth it. You're like, I don't want to take the risk of risking, the, you know, cutting my winner's. My my winner short just for a hundred dollars. Now if it was five hundred dollars, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But then you'd have to be risking more than five hundred dollars on your call too, right? We're up seven twenty. That cost us seven twenty. We're up seventy dollars. Should we put that in there? I'm gonna sell our call right up here. Oh, that's a little close. Let's do this one out here at twenty eight days. And we're gonna sell that call up there for we what do you say a hundred dollars? Let's take that hundred dollar one. We're gonna go ahead and we'll just. See if they'll let us mark. Oh, spread is $70. We ain't doing that. Hold on. Hold the ponies. 
back that baby up. Don't do that. Look at that. That spread, the volume on that thing is one and three. Woo, and the spread is $50. Good thing I noticed that before I went ahead and did it because that would have eaten us alive. We can't do that. Don't do that, guys. Holy smokies. All right. Is that just that one? What about 53 days out? Oh, there ain't nobody trading this thing. Why did we even do that one? That's probably dead too. We probably can't even get our 70 bucks out of it. What if we wanted to go ahead and let's go ahead and liquidate that option? Look, we'd have to pay $30 just to get out of our $70 trade. I guess we'll hang on to it, see if that market won't rally a little bit for us. But, man, we can't go doing anything fancy on that market. There ain't nobody playing in there. All right, here we go. General Mills. General Mills. What do these guys make? Well, they make food, don't they? Let's see. Does anybody want any food from General Mills? If they do, then the market should go up. But if they don't, if they're not hungry, then this market should go down. The problem is General Mills, their costs are going up. And I don't know if they can raise the price of their food fast enough to cover their costs. I think this was a Kramer pick. I think he said, we like General Mills. Let's get some General Mills. So that's what that's doing right now. It's up right now. We're up. Oh, actually, look, we're not up. We picked that thing up on the rally. What is this? This is an 88-day call option. Let's go look and see if we can find that. There it is. $20. Oh, four on the volume. $234. Oh, man, this thing just died on us. Nobody wants to trade that bugger. We're stuck in it. We're stuck in it. Thanks for that, Kramer. Let's see. What should we do here? When you don't know what to do, sometimes you don't do anything. I guess we could, we, well, if that market flushes down, we'll lose some money. How much are we on the line for? 340 bucks. If we think that thing's just going to turn and flush back down, you know, but it could turn and go, you know, who knows? Maybe somebody will want some food. Let's go on to Google. Oh, what's Google doing here for us? Google, we picked it up right here at the top of that rally. Generally speaking, you know, we kind of want to buy the valleys and sell the rallies, but, uh, you know, Timing timing on these options is everything. But this little market up here doesn't look like it wants to keep to run. And we got our we got our call to arms down here on the MACD. See that? The switch over from red to green down here in this lower region. And it's crossed over all the way up into the top region. Now we kind of look for that thing to turn and cascade back down into the lower region again. Back and forth and back and forth, right? So what do we think is going to happen here? Well, who knows? The market could take off and go to the moon could go to the moon or it could just flush back down like this. I got some neat strategies I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you tomorrow. Actually, let's do it. We did. We talked about selling options, didn't we? We talked about selling options. What if I came in here? I'll show you a neat trick. What if this market came all the way back down? Let's draw our Fibonacci ruler in there. And what if that market came all the way back down to the Fibonacci sweet spot? Right down in here. How much money do we have? Oh, Google. Oh, this is Google trading at $142. Do we have $13,000? We do. We got $67,000 in buying power. Let's come in here. We're going to put in a, we're going to go to the options tab. We're going to come in here and we're going to go to 25 days and let's see how much one of these things pays off. I've got to go to puts. Oh, a couple hundred bucks. We're going to come down here and we're going to sell a put at the 61.8% level. Well, that's not very much money. Maybe at the 50% level. I don't know. $117, It's a good lesson. Watch this. If we sell this, all right, 25 days till expiration at the 61.8% level, what that's telling the market is that we want to buy 100 shares of Google stock at that price. If the market comes down, if it comes all the way down and hits that purple line underneath that red line, they're going to give us 100 shares. That's pretty cool, right? It's kind of like a limit order. Why wouldn't you just use a limit order, Land? Well, because if you do it this way, then they also give you $70.50 just for putting that order on, just for doing that. They say, hey, we'll pay you to put that order on there. You're going to do it anyway. You wanted to buy 100 shares of Apple if it came down to the 61.9% retracement level. Why don't you go ahead and sell an option right there? We'll give you $70. And then if those that market comes down there, we'll give you 100 shares and you can have 100 shares. 
you all, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. I guess I'll do that. Is there enough volume and open interest? Barely. Our spread is 10. That means they're going to give you 70 and take 10. Well, that sucks. You have to decide if you want to do it. Now you're only going to get $60, but you're also going to get $60. And if the market comes down here to 61.8, they're going to give you a hundred shares of Google. And maybe that's what you want anyway. I want to be in Google. I love Google. Google's a great company and I want to have me some Google. So I'm going to buy me a hundred shares, but I don't want to buy me a hundred shares up there at the top of this thing. I would rather buy a hundred shares down here as it pulls back into this little A, B, C, D pattern. And if I do that and I want that, then I, they'd pay me $71 minus the $10 in the spread. We might be able to get something better. Look over here. It says the spread is $3. We might be able to get that for $3. That's if we do it at 70. They're asking 73. If we had to go to 73, oh, they're asking 70. Sorry, going the wrong. Oh, three. I might be able to get it down there. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We're going to place that order and see if the, oh, they did it for three bucks. There you go. Sweet as pie. All right. So now if that market comes down there and closes, hits that purple line underneath that red line, they're going to give us 100 shares of that Google stock. Plus, they're going to give us $71 as a consolation prize just for placing the order and playing the game. Come and play the game. Play the carnival game in my tent. Throw your darts over here. GPS. Let's go look at GPS. All right. Oh, look at this. We're making this little Fibonacci projection in here. Same thing. Oh, look at this baby run. We're making money hand over fist on this one. Look at that one. That was a Kramer pick, too. I think Kramer said, go buy some Gap. So we did. And there we put an option on there, and that baby's making some money. What do you want to do? Buy another one. <laughs> Let's wait. Let's let see if it wants to pull back, give us a little ABC, and we'll buy another one right down in here, should we? Or we could just take our profits and buy another one down here on the, on the Gap anyway. Let it fall back down. Because if it does fall back down, this one's going to lose money. How much? We got 88 days. This thing's on a rare rip roaring, ready to go. Maybe it'll come back, give us a little pullback. We can put another one on and we take both of them to the moon, to the moon. All right. It's not going to expire till out here. And it took right off. Boy, we picked that one. Kramer did a night. I can't take any credit for that. That was all Kramer. Kramer said to buy right there. And so we did. All right. Let's go out here to Hormel Foods, another food company. Nobody's buying food. Food markets aren't running. I don't like that one. It's just dying on us. What do you want to do with it, Land? Well, you could hang on to it. You could go sell one against it. We could come out here and go sell a call up here, but there ain't no money in it. 25 bucks, and by the time you pay the spread, there ain't nothing there. Uh, let's see. Let's go out 25 days. We got 88 days on this one again. Plenty of time. Let's go here and sell a call up here. Look like at that, five bucks. It ain't worth doing. What about one if you sell it out there and land all the way out of 88? I don't want to do that. Why don't you want to do that? Because then I get stuck in it for 88 days. And if a market takes off and goes to the moon, I'm giving up everything above that red line for 60 bucks. 92 bucks for 88 days I have to sit in that thing and wait for it to clear out. I just don't like to do that. That's too long for me to sell a call option against that one there. That's called a bull call spread. I don't like to get caught in those bull call spreads for 88 days. That's nasty for a small winner of $62. Because if this thing went up, boom, boom, boom. Let's say it just went up there, that'd be $300. I don't know. You have to decide what you want to do. I think on this one here, we're not doing too well. Again, I'm not going to take credit for this one. That was a Kramer call to Hormel Foods. We went and looked at it. Kramer said, buy. People want to buy food. But look at the MACD. This is where you want to buy down here when they get to call to arms down here. Call to arms. Get ready. Get ready. Buy, buy, buy. And then the market shot up and all the way across. And then we bought it right up here at the top of that red. What's the opposite of call to arms? Run for the hills. Run, <laughs> Run for the hills. And that's where we bought it. Okay. Call to arms and run to the... Oh, Hershey. Hershey, I'm so disappointed in you. This was a seasonal trade. Seasonally speaking, Hershey goes to the moon through here. And Hershey... Nope. When you can't afford to buy food, you also can't afford to buy chocolate bars. So no chocolate bars going out the door for Easter. 
Well, you know, Easter time is when they buy all the chocolate bars. So why is this market falling? We're coming into the Easter time frame. Isn't Easter like relatively soon? So you'd think all the stores would be loading up on their Easter candy. Cause old Hershey to go to the moon, but not this year. What do you want to do? That's $330 down. That's a nasty drop. That's a nasty drop. What do you want to do? Let's come and see if we could sell something against it. Are we going to hang on to it, or are we just going to cut our loser short? We don't think Hershey's going to go. It's just dying here. If you wanted to hang on to Hershey, we only got 53 days. We're starting to get to that curl where we're starting to drop our theta time decay very quickly. And it's not showing any promise. If we wanted to hang on to it, we could come in here and we could sell a call against it. All right. How much money are they going to give us? If we go to 25 days. There's nobody trading it. No volume, no open interest. Can't do it. You want to go to 53 days? No volume, no open interest. Nobody's doing it. You can't sell anything against it to try and collect some premium because there ain't nobody there to, to, to buy it from you. We could try. Let's see. We could come in here and we're going to sell this one. And we want to put it up there. How much would we get? Oh, that's the wrong direction. we got to sell calls. I'm sorry. Backwards. Okay. We're going to come in here and do 25 days. How much could we get? 200. Well, that's not bad. Well, that's at the money. See, $92. That's not $140. If the market, they'd give us $142. $140 for selling that call right there for the next 25 days. And then that would liquidate our position here if it went up there above it. And we get the difference in profit between the green line and the red line, $471. But <clears throat> that's only at this purple line. So are they going to give us 25? They're going to give us 140 bucks if we sell that against our $910 call. So you have to decide. If we think that market's going to fall, we can even pull it in closer. Then that'll give us $200. But look at the volume on this thing. It's only two and 183. There ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody playing that game. Spreads $8. So they give us 202. We have to give them eight. Figure eight to get out too. 16 off of our $200. Do you want to just cut your loser short? You got $330 into it. You could try and salvage this thing by selling $200 every, you know, a couple of them would be $400 if you do it twice out of your $900. Oh, what do you want to do? I don't like it. If the seasonal nature of the market isn't going through, then you just dump the seasonal nature of the market. That's general philosophy. But oftentimes we know that markets have drawdowns on the seasonal nature of markets. Sometimes they draw down and then they go. Indecision, indecision, indecision. Let's go ahead and let's let's um, let's delete this one. Let's look at a closer one in. Oh, that's about as close as we can get. If we go to eleven days, there ain't nobody playing that game, land. Those are weekly options. How about eighteen days? Ooh, even worse. And those quarterlies are about the best you can do. And that's twenty-eight days. You're gonna have to hang on to that thing for twenty-eight days. Yeah, we could kind of stop the bleeding a little bit to some degree. We could buy a put option, or we could, you know, we could say, "Well, I want to, I want to own some, some Hershey," and we could come in here and we could sell a put like we did before. We sell a put down here and collect sixty-five dollars, but then we have to buy the shares. They'd have to give us the shares at that point. Not sure we want to do that. Probably the best bet is just to get out of this thing. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this just for fun. Let's come in here. We're going to sell. We're going to sell this one and we're going to collect the premium. 200 is what they're going to. Let's see if we can get them to give it to us for 208. You know, they're not going to, first of all, it's too far out. And so we'll go all the way down to $2. Look at the spread go up to get to $2. That's a $15 spread. We're going to have to give up $15 out of our $200. All right. So now we did a little covered call. So 
little covered call. Michael Bruce would call that a poor man's covered call. I'd call it a calendar bull call spread. Let's see. Are we happy with it? I guess we'd, we're happy with it. We did it. Intel. Oh, Intel's losing money too. Oh, no, it's making money. How come we're making money on Intel? Oh, we sold a call. We just sold a naked call, didn't we? Uh, just that was an example of a naked call. That's all that was. We sold a call and the market's dropping in our favor. <laughs> we're up 114 bucks. Max amount of money we can. We only got $28 left in it. We got nothing else to make and everything to risk. If that market turns and starts to go up, we could lose everything, but there's nothing else to make. We got the max profit already. 142 is the max amount of money we can make. We've already made 113. That leaves us $28 in there. Are you going to risk having that market turn around and go back up and start to lose your money? Or are you going to take it off at 113? <clears throat> just to try and get 28 more dollars out of it. Yeah, it looks like it's falling. You could stay in a little bit longer if you wanted. Do we have any losses that we need to cover? This would be a good one to cover some losses. If you're day trading, this is what I do sometimes. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm down $100 on my day trading. Come over here and find an option that's making some money. <laughs> Liquidate it and cover your losses. Hey, I had a green day. <laughs> that's how you solve that problem. Let's come in here and mark it out of that thing. See if it'll get us out. There we go. Take a little profit off of that, baby. All right. IWN. What are we doing here? Oh, we're just long some shares on the Russell. The Russell 2000, we bought some shares. We're up $77. What could we do on this one? How many? Well, how, oh, we only have 27 shares. If we had 100 shares, we could sell a call against it. But we don't have, we're trying to build, how much money do we have? That'd be, if we wanted another... 30 shares. Ooh. Well, not too bad, I guess. 30 shares would cost. Well, if we want to know, it wouldn't be 30 shares. That's we got 30 shares. We need 60 shares. Ooh. 50, 60. We have, well, we have buying power of 63,000. We want to spend another $10,000 buying some Russell shares so that we can put a covered call on it. This, I don't even know if we can. Let's go see what a covered call on an option would be. Nah, look, no volume, no open interest. We can't do it anyway. All right, let's come down here to Coca-Cola. This is the knockout rally. Once again, we were trying to get this seasonal strategy. And if you can't buy food, a lot of people cutting back on buying the Coca-Cola. I don't know. People would give up buying food so they could drink their Coca-Cola. But seasonally speaking, that thing's supposed to rally, and it ain't doing it. Certainly ain't doing it very powerfully or very strongly, are they? Uh, Ebert's making some comments. I apologize, Ebert. I haven't been paying much attention to what's going on over here. I think this was back when we were talking about Apple. You are correct. Amazing, given they have Siri. Figured it should have been AI a long time ago. I agree. Why in the heck have they not fixed their Siri by now? Um, they lost their lead developer and other top people. I, I didn't know that. That's not good news either for old Apple. Ebert says, this is about 3000 for it. I'm not sure which one that one is. Sorry, Ebert. I need to come back and check. I need to, again, I got to get that little watch thing that buzzes me to look back over here on this monitor more often. Which one are you talking about, Ebert? This is about $3,000 for it. Let's look at this one here. Going in Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Well, we got our covered call on Coca-Cola, so there's not a lot we can do here. Let's just go on to the next one. We got mags. 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 Ooh, we bought a call. We got, we're long 50. And we bought a put as insurance, and it's losing 60 bucks. So Mags is going up. Mags is going up. What is Mags? Magnificent 7. Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft. 
I think um, a couple others in there, those big tech stocks starting to rally. It's 50. We could put on, we could put on 50 more. It's $39. Now we could do that. Let's come in. Well, let's see if there's any options we can sell against it. Um, 25. There's no options. Volume zero, open interest is nothing. You can't sell any options against it. This one here must have been a put option. What did we do? Oh, my goodness. Look, zero volume, open interest, 24. That was a worthless option. We must have done that. I don't know why the heck we did that. Worthless option. I guess we expected it to go that. Here's Microsoft. Microsoft's not doing anything either. Microsoft's kind of slow on the rise. We've got a long call on Microsoft. We need it to go. We're up 200 bucks, starting to pull back. I need Microsoft to rally. And it's not doing it. What if we wanted to sell a call against it? Let's come in here and go out 25 days, and we're going to sell a call. Uh, that's not bad. Let's come out here and sell that baby. If we sold that one 25 days out, we'd get $233 and everything in between it. Question is, do we think it's going to go above that red line by $225? If it does, how far is that? Not very far. $500. So we come down here, $225 is only right there. So there, draw a line across there. Do you think that mark is going to go to there? Do you think it's going to go to there or above there? Do you think it's going to go above there? If you don't think it's going to go above that white line, you could sell that call and pick up an extra couple hundred bucks. Now, this is a call option. If it drops, we might be stuck in it. We were stuck in it for 25 days for $233. Then we could do the the wheel strategy. We have to sell it again, sell it again, same dollar cost average on the way down. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see how we do on this one. We're going to 234. They're not going to give it to us for that though. Edit. We're going to come in here. We're going to have to go all the way down to 232. All right. That's the bid. That's what they're asking because we're selling. All right. So we sold that one and they gave us $232. All right, so that's how that cookie crumbles. Uh, and then we got a couple more. I think we're running out of time here, though. Let's just go to the, let's look at them quick. There's Pfizer. We just got a covered call on Pfizer, 100 long, one sold one for 52 bucks. We've got, oh, we got a covered call on that one, too, and it's dropping Procter & Gamble. We're going to make $200 on our call, but we're losing money on our shares. Down 84, up 113 on the call. So that's dampening our losses a little bit there. Palantir, we got two long positions, two long calls. Not making anything. We need that thing to rally. We got two long calls on it. We've got, um, oh, personalities. That thing's dropping. We got in right up there on the top. We didn't, where's our stop? Lan, where's your stop? What happened to our option? Sometimes I need to write better notes. I'm not sure what I did here. Oh, there ain't nothing out there. You can't put an option on it. Why do we have 100 shares on personnel? I think that was a Kramer recommendation, and we couldn't do an option, so we just bought some shares because there ain't no shares to have. We can't, we can't sell a call against it. There ain't no volume. There ain't no open interest. That's bad. Oh, it's a dollar. That's why it's a one dollar. Oh, I think this might have been a one of those pump and dumps. We're down 30 bucks. Let's just kill it. All right. PayPal. We're up a little bit on PayPal. I was expecting PayPal to give us a little bit of a pullback. It didn't do it. It rallied and went to the moon. There we go. It's getting up there testing this previous high up in here. That's not good. That's kind of a resistance zone up in there and it's right up in there. That's oftentimes a sell signal. Lots of guys will take shorts right there. We're up $150. 
Huh. This might be the wrong choice. I want to liquidate that. I want to liquidate that. Land wants to liquidate that right there. Land doesn't like what he's seeing. Why don't you like it, Land? Well, this little ABC pattern in here, ABC, and it's up hitting 161.8. I think it's going to blow off. And even if it does pull, blow off a little bit and turn around and go back up, we could come and put in another one. But I don't think it's going to rally from here. I just don't think it's going to do it. Take that off for now. We'll come back and look at it later and see if it was the wrong decision. All right. So what do we make today? $232. So let's come down here. In our options. On Monday, we made $232. Right. You're keeping your spreadsheet. And in our day trading. In our day trading, we made $44. Every little bit counts. Hey, at least we're green, right? We're not red today. So we're going to take this, doot, 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 across there, drop it down to here. 276 bucks. That ain't bad. I'll take it. Come in here, put a little green on the table. Did we hit our goal? Our goal was $232. We hit our goal with our options, not with our day trading, but we hit our goal. We get to say that's a goal day. Hit our goal. There we go. All right. We're up $9,600 on the month. We had one really good day here, and we had a really bad day there. <laughs> we went hog wild on that one. We went crazy. We were actually testing our QOCOs. That was our QOCO day where we were trying to tune in our QOCOs for day trading. Remember that? So we wrote it down anyway. That's okay. I think that's what all this was in here too. We were just trying to, we weren't really trading, but I don't remember what we did in there. So what do we got to do? We could better write our notes in here. Let's see. This was um, new note. We were day trading. Took a couple positions looking for news continuation that never followed that never followed through our news report never really did anything for us better green than red Even if it's a small green, better green than red. This one, we're going to make a new note. New note. Uh, closed out. Few options over in the stock market. All right. That's what that was. I got a Sunday school lesson for you. So don't run off. I know we're getting ready to wrap things up. Oh, look. That NASDAQ just didn't do anything, did it? It's just a good thing we stayed away. It's just died. Died, died, died. We'd have probably lost money if we sat here trying to trade it. Um, I don't know. The one minute wasn't. Had a couple of nice moves in there. We might have been able to capitalize on. I don't know. Tough, tough market today. All right. Let's go to the Sunday school lesson, shall we? Why is trading not gambling? What? I thought trading was gambling. Trading is not gambling because when you gamble and you put $100 on black and they spin the wheel and you're wrong, do you get some of your $100 back? No. When trading and you invest or put a trade on with $100 and you're wrong, do you get to pull some of it back? Yes, you do. When trading, your profits are not capped. You have unlimited profit potential. That's why trading is not considered gambling. It's not an all or nothing play. Now, they can tell you it's not gambling, but you know what? Everything in life is a gamble. You're going to go over and talk to that pretty girl at the club and see if she's going to say hi to you. 
that's a gamble. You're gambling something. It might be your emotions and not money. Of course, that might be money too. <laughs> we all know how that goes. But uh, nonetheless, everything in life is a gamble. But this is why they don't consider. This is why they don't consider uh, trading gambling. All right, we we're not allowed as a registered person with the NFA National Futures Association. I'm not allowed to. They, they, it's not that we're not allowed. I mean, they're not going to come and throw me in jail because I do, but they advise us. It's in our advisory not to associate trading with gambling. Trading is not gambling. All right. Because if you put a hundred dollars down or you put a thousand dollars down or you have a margin account of a thousand dollars and you put that down, can you lose it? Yeah, sure. But you can also get out and get some of it back. It's not an all or nothing. It's not an all or nothing play. And that's the reason why we're not supposed to associate trading with gambling. All right. They don't like us to do that because you can get some of it back if you put it down. Unlike gambling, if you put it all on, it's gone. All of it. All right. So that's your little Sunday school lesson for today. And it looks like NASDAQ's getting ready to break higher on this little run right here. It looks like it wants to go one more time on that little A, B, C. Um, there's your little line right there across the sand. Right down there, that thing wants to go. Make sure it goes. Let it go up a little bit, pull back, and then get the second rally. Land, turn on your hike and ashes. Okay, there it is. All right. You can wait for it to break above this line here. That would be another spot where a lot of guys will figure that that's showing bullishness enough that they might want to attempt an entry. So watch that. See if that's what you want to do. But I'm going to let you go, and we will catch you tomorrow. And for those of you who are in the St. George area, subscribe to the and uh, coming to the to the class tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class at the university, Uvar Hazy Building, same place, same bat channel, same bat cave. We will see you there tonight, and then again here tomorrow to follow up on what we learned in class tonight. Okay, see ya.